Can we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Father, again we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want us to turn to the book of Proverbs. One little verse here that uh, I think is very profitable. And I'm trusting God will help us with it this morning. Proverbs, the 16th chapter, and the 32nd verse. Proverbs 16, 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. I don't think the world's going to praise. Now notice God said the one that rules his spirit's better than the one that takes the city, but I don't think the world's going to praise anybody who controls his own spirit. I don't think the Lord, well, I don't think the world ever praised anybody. Now if any man can take a city, they'll have a ticker tape parade for him, praise him and to publish his name abroad and hail him in all kinds of ways, but God said there's somebody better than him, and that person won't get any praise at all. John Bunyan wrote a book, a classic. Uh, they tell me he's a classic, along with Pilgrim's Progress, that great book that he wrote. But he also wrote another one called uh, The City of Mansoul. And uh, in it, he shows how the devil attacks this city, and this city has gates, the eye gate, the ear gate, the nose gate, the mouth gate, really the gates of the senses. And he tells how the devil fights these, but if any man can control that city, uh, in God's sight he's a great man. Now, I want you to look a little bit, as we take a look this morning, to verify this scripture at the life of David. David, as a young man, was called and anointed of God. As a young man, he was anointed, called of God to be king. And this young man went out and killed Goliath. And uh, he could take his army and kill thousands of the enemy. They sang his praises. Saul has slain his thousands, but David is tens of thousands. And uh, this, this man, David, who could kill a lion and kill a bear and kill this giant Goliath and slay the thousands of earthy, so who wouldn't want him to be king? But God said, he, God said that he wasn't ready to be a king because he couldn't control his own spirit. Now, how many people are called of God, anointed of God, but they can't control their own spirit and they can't, they're not fit for their calling? Come on now. Can't control their own spirit. And God said the man that can control his own spirit is greater than a man who can go out and take a city. Now, the world will not, not do that, but I'm talking about God's sight, and we're concerned this morning. We're in church, so we're concerned about what God says. We're not here for the world and to, to claim of a, a city and give the praise that way. We're talking about God now, and I want to know who's the greatest in God's sight. And David could not control his own spirit, and so God had to, had to take this man, and he wasn't ready to be king, although he was anointed king and called to be king. And so God took Saul and used Saul to chase David for 15 years. Maybe you've wondered, why did God, and I know as I used to years ago wonder, why did God let this man Saul chase David? David was supposed to be king. Why didn't God put him on the throne? Why didn't God kill Saul? Well, God was using Saul. Man, God was, Saul was God's instrument to teach David. Isn't that something? Hasn't God got strange teachers? David, for 15 years, was within an inch of a foot. He said, within a step of death. He was in a step of death. This way he was for 15 years. But God had his, his servant Saul teaching him a lesson and after him for 15 years. Why? To get him to control his own spirit. He could conquer cities. 
But he couldn't sit on the throne until he could control his own spirit. And so God let Charles Saul chase him every place for 15 years into caves and out of caves and all around. And one time uh, Saul caught him in a cave when he was after Saul. David caught him and cut off a little piece of his skirt. And I'll tell you, God smote David's heart for even cutting off a little bit of his skirt. See, God's trying to get this man to control his own spirit. And uh, Saul, this man, Saul, I mean, this man, David, a great man, but he had not learned, it took him evidently the 15 years to control his own spirit. I want you to see how important this is. Husbands and wives that can't control their own spirit. Got to have the last word. Got to prove I'm right. Why can't we let it go? What does it make whether you're right? The sun will rise tomorrow and the rain will come just like it always has come. And who cares whether or not you're right? What good is it if you can prove it? Why not let the other person be right even if they're wrong? You've conquered your own spirit. Brother, you just look right there and you preach it to me. Oh, I was thinking one time, I, I said sometimes when I get real close to people, I have to look down at the floor because I'm afraid to look at people because if I do, they say, boy, he threw that right at me. <laughs> and I, maybe I just happened to be glanced at you when I said it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm glad this, now, this is one, this is a marvelous little verse. So David, you see, God had to train this man before he could sit on the throne. He had to conquer his own spirit. But God did a strange thing. He sent a woman by to help him. Of all the things, a woman. <laughs> but he sent a woman who had conquered her own spirit. See, he sent this woman, Abigail. If you remember reading the story, David was out with his men hiding and there was her, the Nabal. Uh, you remember he was shearing sheep and David's men had watched over Nabal and uh, his sheep and his men and had kept away enemies and been a protection to them. And now they were shearing time and they were feeding the men. So David and his men needed a little food. And so David said, look, they're shearing up there, Nabal's. Uh, sent, uh, sent some of his men up to try and get a little food from him. When they got to Nabal, uh, Nabal said, who is They said, David would like a little bit. We've protected him. He said, who is David? said, uh, he's just a runaway slave. And uh, there's a lot of runaway slaves. Why should I help him? He wouldn't give him any. And I tell you, brother, that upset David so much. He got his men. He said, get your swords on, brother. We're going to go up there and we're going to take care of Nabal. Yeah. Yes, sir. We're going to take care of him. See, he hadn't conquered his own spirit yet. So God sent Nabal's wife. She heard that he was coming. And God sent her. And uh, oh, what a beautiful woman. It said of Nabal, the Bible says of Nabal, that he was evil in his doings and churlish. Now, the Webster says churlish means that he was vulgar, ill-natured, peevish, difficult, difficult to work with and to deal with. What a man. And she, the Bible says she was a woman of good understanding and beautiful countenance and how she ever got, got married to this man, I don't know, but she was. And uh, if any woman ever had a right to hate her husband, I think this woman did. And I think the average woman, if she knew, if she knew that David was coming after her husband, I want you to know she tried to protect him even though he was mean, vulgar, ill-tempered, and hard to get along with. She went down to try to protect him. Come on now. This is the Old Testament. We got something better than they had. Come on now. We got something better than they had. But this woman went down to protect this man, and most women have said, Oh boy, David, I hope you kill him. <laughs> Come on now. How many there are would be like for God to kill their companion? They wouldn't want to do it, but they'd like for God to do it. Woo-wee. 
I don't know whether I'm getting close to this is good or what. I'm not sure. <laughs> Come on now, stick with me. We're in church. We're talking about what God wants, not what the world wants. I'm not talking about what the world wants. I'm talking about what God wants. He wants a person who can control their own spirit, and then he can put them where he wants them. So this woman, Abigail, uh, she went and met him. And uh, I marveled at this woman. I marveled her spirit. But see, she had conquered her own spirit. And many a woman, as I said, with a, with a husband like that would have been glad for David to have done away with him. That's what David was coming to do. But I marveled at her. And uh, in the Word of God, it says she met David and brought him food. And she, she said, I, I didn't know you were coming. I would have seen that you got food. But now, David, she said, I want to tell you something. Uh, I, I copied it down in the New International Version. She said to David, David... She said, when the Lord has done for my master, that's David, every good thing he promised concerning him and has appointed him leader over Israel. She said, uh, she was trying to, don't, now don't, don't touch Nabal. Don't you bother him. She said, my master, this is David, she's talking about him. She said, will not have on his conscience the staggering burden of needless bloodshed or having avenged himself. David, I don't want you to have on your conscience this awful burden of avenging yourself. What a woman. What a woman. And especially against her husband that was so mean, so churlish, so evil. Now don't you touch him, David, because she said, I don't want you to have on your conscience when God puts you on the throne. I don't want you to carry that burden around with you of having avenged yourself with your own hands. Oh, what a woman. See, she had conquered her own spirit. And God said, that's greater than the one who conquered. David could conquer cities, but he couldn't conquer his own spirit. And God sent a woman to help him. And David said to Abigail, praise be the, to the Lord, the God of Israel, who has sent you today to meet me May you be blessed for your good judgment and for keeping me from bloodshed this day and from avenging myself with my own hands. May God bless you for keeping me today from avenging myself with my own hands. Oh, when a man can do that, he can conquer his own spirit and uh, leave it up to God. So I marvel. And she did what she could to protect this man when he was such a man as he was, this man Nabal, and that she went out to meet David. She kept him, and David re rejoiced and was thankful for it. What a woman. She did not want David to avenge himself. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if there were more Abigails around that could say, now, wait a minute, son, don't avenge yourself. There's a God on the throne. Yeah. And don't you avenge yourself, and I want to keep you from it. Wouldn't it be wonderful to stand in front of different ones saying, Now, wait a minute, brother. Wait a minute, sister. Don't avenge yourself. There's a God on the throne. I don't want you to have this weight on your conscience of taking things into your own hands. Why not let them go? Why not let them be right? Why not let them have their way? Why do you have to be right? Why do you have to prove to yourself that you're right? So many times we've got to have the last word. I'm right and I know it and I've got to prove it. Why do you have to prove it to anybody? Leave it to God. Leave it to him and don't avenge yourself of that which uh, we can leave it in God's hands. So God, as I said, used Saul uh, to chase David for 15 years uh, till, he could, uh, till he could learn to trust, turn Saul over to God. As he was waiting, are you waiting, Lord? Why don't you? So they completely left him and he didn't try to avenge himself. I think of another simple little illustration. It's interesting. When David had the chance to be Mary, one of King Saul's daughters, Michael, and David, Saul thought he'd kill him. So he said, You go out, and he was going out and killed 200 Philistines, and uh, I'll, I'll let you. And bring the foreskins, he said, here. He hoping that they would kill him. Well, David went out and he, would, he could kill. Two hundred. No problem to him. He was a warrior. And uh, so he went and killed them. 
And uh, he was, Michael was given to him then as a wife. And so one day Saul was coming after him and Michael told him, she said, now Saul's coming after you. And it isn't interesting, I thought it's such a strange thing. God had Michael, a woman, let him down over the wall in a basket and Saul was a warrior. He could have fought his way out of there, but God wouldn't let him. Why, they couldn't have touched David. This great warrior, he'd have conquered any men coming after him. And God said, no, you can't do it. Let a woman help you out of this situation. <laughs> That's rather humorous, but I was thinking, you forgive me if that's too humorous. I thought, wouldn't that be a great story to tell your grandchildren? Granddad, how'd you get out of that? Well, a woman helped me down over the wall. You, you wouldn't tell a story like that. You want to tell a story, boy, how you got the sword out there and wheeled him this way and that way, and brother, you conquered the situation. That's the great story, but you couldn't brag about that. But God put him in a service position where he couldn't brag about it. So this woman helped him out, and another woman helped him out. Now, you forgive me for being too humorous, but I trust we get the point in this. God wants us to be able to conquer our own spirit. And you're going to have to let people go. You're going to have to let things ride. You're going to have to not prove you're right. And wonder for all that we could arise. And especially you older women, that you could be an Abigail, to stop the young women. Help them with their husbands. Like Bob, the Bible says, Paul said of the older women, help the younger women to know how to love their husbands. You help them. You encourage them along. You help them to control their own spirit. And when you can control your own spirit, God said that's better than a man who can go out and take a city. And when David could control his own spirit, then God took care of Saul. And God went out and put David on the throne. Well, when Abigail, she was a woman of good understanding. She didn't tell her husband what she did until the next day. He was in a drunken Free, I guess, and then waited. She waited till he calmed down. The next day, she told him, said his heart turned to stone. And then, in ten days, God killed him. She didn't try to kill him. God did. What a man! What a woman! Oh, that we could have more Abigails to stop the young from avenging themselves, and that we could learn to control our own spirit. And God said that'll be greater than if you can go out and take a city.